You're listening to The Breakfast Show with Ben and Liam. They're on your radio, and that's why you can't see them. So stay for a while, they're gonna make you smile. And whatever you do, don't touch that dial. You're feeling fine waking up to the sunshine with Ben and Liam. G'day there, podcaster, and welcome to the Right Around the Country podcast. Ooh, yeah. It's actually all around Australia. I haven't pulled you up on that one for a while, but it's, yeah, it's, it's recap all around Australia and then the, the date of the, uh, yep. the episode. I don't think people really care. Well, I certainly do, Ben, and I think that'd be enough to follow the form guide. I mean, I sent you an email with dot points. It's yeah, I got, the form, I got the form guide. You know what I did with it? Don't tell me. I'll tell you after the podcast. Ben, producer Belle is a bit of an eco-warrior and she's always up there sky high on her high horse. Um, This is some audio from the show last week. I have half a bag every week go into my bin and that's it. And that's including, that's everything from my week. So yeah, we were talking about, uh, you know, the bins you put to the curb and we were saying, hey, they're talking about making them bigger so people can fit more rubbish in it. Mm. And she was complaining, saying we don't need that. I only have half a bag of rubbish every single week. In my head, I thought, well, that's pretty rich. And uh, I remember when she left in the song to go into the other room, I said, we should definitely do a bin raid, go to the house. Mm. So that's what we did. Last night, we were clad in black tactical vests. Where'd you get those vests from? They're pretty cool. Well, yeah, I bought them online. I'm pretty sure I'm on a terror watch list now. because <laughs> I don't, they're I, like I, legit. They're pretty legit. Yeah. I don't know if you're allowed to buy them. Um, and they're like quite, they're quite heavy. Heavy, yeah, they had like yeah. metal cables in them. Well, that's it. I mean, you need the right equipment for a for a sting like this. Is that show budget? Uh, no, that was actually my own. I was actually <laughs> going to hit you up later on. Um, yeah, right. I'm not paying for that. Easy. I'll I'll, I'll find someone else to go halves on those tactical vests, <laughs> or I might sell them back online. Then I'll really be on a watch list. <laughs> um, so at 10:30 p.m. last night, which is like pretty late, pretty late for us, mind you, doing breakfast radio, uh, we rocked up unannounced. At Producer Bell's door. Producer Bell didn't answer straight away, so I decided to give her one more knock before I busted out the battering ram. This time she got the message and promptly answered the front door. Bin inspection. What the f? Random bin inspection. Open up. We dragged Bell out to the curb and under the hue of the orange street light, we checked her bins. <laughs> the tactical suits, Bell. Ready? And drop. Dismantle. Looks pretty full to me. (laughs) Looks pretty bloody full. In all seriousness, it was a very empty bin, but that didn't stop us from picking apart what was in there. There's still a lot of contraband for an eco-warrior. Single use? Yeah. uh, How do you explain that? I don't know. How do you (laughs) explain that? Single use. What kind of world are you leaving for your children? For someone who's always pointing the finger at other people saying what they're doing wrong, there certainly seem to be a lot of mistakes in producer Bell's bin. Hang on. Is that kitty litter? Yeah. Shouldn't that go on the green bin? (laughs) It's the wrong bin. So late at night. It's the wrong bin. This is disgusting. (laughs) The really disgusting part, it was a biohazard. That's AIDS cat poo, isn't it? (laughs) I've I've been in the game long enough to know this cat's got AIDS. You gotta taste that to be sure. (laughs) (laughs) Just when we thought the job couldn't get any more dangerous. A major security breach. We saw producer Bell's cat Gary standing by the front door. Full back, full back, (laughs) AIDS cat. There's an AIDS cat. (laughs) <laughs> Not safe. Not safe. We hastily neutralised the threat. <laughs> then proceeded to issue producer Bell her fine. Just going to dry up two schnitzel packets. Hey, it's cat litter. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for not saving the environment. See you tomorrow. See you in a few hours. What a single-use plastic. I was overwhelmed. Yeah. I really was. But you're glad we had those tactical vests on the AIDS cat charges. I'm that? glad we had the uh, tranquilizer bullets. Yeah, yeah. Definitely tranquilizer. <laughs> uh, uh, hey, there is a full video on the Ben and Liam Instagram now as well if you want to see what Producer Bill's house looks like. <laughs> <laughs> Over the weekend, Liam, I was driving to mum and dad. Um, I had my fiance Sam in the car and Sam, my partner, freaked out. She's like, oh my God. I was like, what? And she's like, and then like, she's got better eyes than me. So she see further down the road there was a guy hitchhiking he looked pretty put together yeah and then well, I as a joke started slowing down not not, <laughs> not close enough that he got false hope but did you, did you do the enough thing that where I you, say Sam got scared where you pulled over and then he went to grab the door handle and he went <laughs> and then he went oh no come on and then he, he went to get the door handle and then he went no, I, was more, I was more doing it to scare Sam because she was yeah. like no don't I was like I'm going to get it's him it's funny I like to think of myself as an easy going kind of guy yeah. then 
but not a chance in hell. Oh. There, no way would I ever stop for a hitchhiker. No way would I ever decide to hitchhike. It absolutely baffles me that people would do that. Especially in this country. Oh. Of all the places to hitchhike. I mean, with our history. That's why I was blown away when I was talking to producer Belle about it. And she said, I've done it. And I said, hang on, what? 13, 24, 10, give us a buzz. Have you ever hitchhiked? Or have you even picked up a hitchhiker as well? I don't know. I suppose some people say, like, yeah, whatever, man. Like, they, uh, you know. What's scarier, picking up a hitchhiker or doing the hitchhiking? Well, either way, you it's, going, it's, a, it's a jump into the fog, isn't yeah. it? It's, it's into, it's into <laughs> it really the unknown. Because if you've got someone, some random next to you who's hitchhiking, yeah. you're driving, you're at the wheel. What oh. if they grab the wheel? I don't oh. know. I don't know. I just wouldn't do it. Danielle joins us now. Uh, you've hitchhiked? Hi, Ben and Liam. Yeah, me and my husband, we got, like we were in Tassie, got um, climbing Mount Wellington, got literally three quarters of the way up to the top, mm. started snowing, icy as, mm. and we had no way of coming back down, and luckily a family stopped by and picked us up and took us back down. At least with a family, like, you got lucky there, because I feel like it's not as scary. Yeah, that's true. That's and if there's true. two of you, I don't know what you did, but I would, if it was me and my partner, I'd get her to sit in the passenger seat of the front, and I'd sit behind the driver. It's true, yeah, so you can... Huh? Yeah. Yeah. You can. Yeah, I, I made my husband kind of sit next to him and I was yeah. like closer to the door. Yeah. Right. Yeah, right. Well, no, you, I think the prime position is you want to be behind, behind the driver. Because have, <laughs> so you, seen, have you ever seen, yeah, like Goodfellas or Sopranos or you yeah. know how they normally pop up from behind? And, oh, yeah. That's, uh, that's what I would do in my head if needed be. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Uh, they're like, yeah, mate, jump in, no worries at all. Just sit in the front there. Do you mind if I sit behind you with this piece of string, just in case anything goes weird? Uh, Dan, uh, you used to hitchhike all the time, Dan. Is that right? Yeah. Um, when I worked, I used to hitchhike back home every four days. So, yeah. where would you? So, if you knew that I'm hitchhiking all the time, where was you go to spot to get a ride? Like the pub, or what were you doing? I would literally finish like working twelve hour shift grab my bag and start walking with my thumb on the side of the road because there was only, like, one road in and out. So, yeah. And did you ever run Sometimes into any... Sometimes it was any, a bit entertaining. Any sketchy characters? Um, had an old dude that drove at about 70 k's an hour, so <laughs> it took me 12 hours after working oh, wow. a 12-hour oh. shift to get home. Uh, had a guy show me his knife to protect him from... Um, hitchhikers, <laughs> it's like, dude, why, why pick hitchhikers up if you've got to carry a knife to protect This is my knife. True. This is my knife to protect me from hitchhikers. Yeah, true. You don't need to pick them up. You don't need to pick, he's a, he's a novel idea. You don't need a knife in your car if you're not picking up random people all the time. Also, with this guy driving 70Ks, I mean, I suppose beggars can't be choosers, mate. You just gotta get home in his time. 13, 24, 10. Did you get a message that wasn't meant for you? How's this been? A guy's gone viral online after sharing an email chain he was accidentally CC'd in. He was going for a job and uh, he was accidentally roped into the, the chat with the bosses in the HR department yeah. about why they were rejecting him. So it's, uh, it was certainly not meant for him. Yeah. So they, they said he looked like a weirdo on social media. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be soul destroying. Oh, yeah. You're like, why? You're like, what's wrong with my social media? Is oh. it me? It's just a reflection of my life. Yeah, no one likes... I mean, normally the conversation is like, oh, I sent it to the wrong person, but it's almost more brutal hearing it from the perspective of the person who received the message. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, absolutely. Oh, I sent the message, uh, I messaged to the wrong person. In fact, it was like, it was yesterday the day before, Liam, because you and I did the bin raid at Producer Bell's house. Mm -hmm. And you were driving, and we were on the expressway heading up to Producer Bell's house, and I text her partner, Luke, and said, hey, what's her address again? We're about 10 minutes away. We're wearing all black and have our torches. But I sent that... <laughs> To the guy that's doing my suit fitting for my upcoming wedding. And he called the police. Could you imagine <laughs> what he would have been thinking receiving that text message? Hey, what's her address again? We're about 10 minutes away. We're wearing all black and have our torches. <laughs> <laughs> and then I had to explain to him that's a work thing. We're yeah. raiding our producer's bins. It didn't sound much better. Yeah, yeah. It's a work thing. What do you, what do, you what do? You, what do you do? Male stripper? What do you, what do, you do? <laughs> oh, that is so bad. Did you get a message? That wasn't meant for you. Thirteen twenty four ten is the number. Maddie, did you send the message or did you receive it? Um, I sent the message. Oh no, oh, no. you didn't. Did you? Uh, yeah, so I actually was talking to a guy, and his phone broke. So he texted me off of his mate's phone, and I was stupid enough to forget. 
and I started me- messaging him some raunchy messages. And oh, oh my god, <laughs> it was so embarrassing. Yeah. <laughs> so did the friend? That's kind of awkward for the friend as well. Did they straight away admit like, oh no, stop! Like this isn't no, the right number. No, no. He he went along with it, and then he was like, "Hang on, who's this?" And I was like, "It's Maddie." And he was like, "What? Who's Maddie?" And I'm like, "Oh my god." <laughs> How's this guy been like a, such a player that he doesn't know who he's getting these photos from? Like, right. There's so many options that it could be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's probably one of the girls I work with. I don't know. Just calling off a burner phone sounds about right. Yeah, this stuff usually happens to me. I'll just go along with it, see where it leads. Oh, Maddie, that is horrible. But thank you very much for sharing. Uh, Bianca, you sent the message. What was it? I did. Um, I had an ex. And my ex and my husband had the same name. Mm. And I sent a message to what I thought was my husband saying, hey, sexy man, been thinking of you. Meet me for a quickie this afternoon. Uh, but, I, but I accidentally sent it to my other ex yeah, with the yeah, same name yeah. who was on his honeymoon and his wife picked <gasps> up the phone. Awesome. Oh, no. What happened? Did, Love that. Did you explain but yourself? It, uh, no, he was furious yeah. and wouldn't let me explain. And they... Totally ignored me, blocked me, and I couldn't explain that it was a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Not on the honeymoon. <laughs> yeah, it didn't go down well, and they don't. She won't even look at me now. If yeah, you see me in the I can see why. <laughs> That's know, hard, you're on, you're on the beach somewhere out in Noosa, I, and I believe you. Just hearing you talk, I'm like, oh, yeah, I believe that. I, I but I also, I, I also, from their understand. perspective, yeah, no way. I'm not. I, I'm not <laughs> believing you. <laughs> Uh, Tanisha, you received one. I'm, I'm so sorry this happened to you. What happened? The message wasn't meant for you. So we were just sitting down at a lovely family dinner and my dad starts texting his girlfriend across the table and messaged that all the things he wanted to do to her that night. Uh, and it was straight to me. Oh, uh, yuck, <laughs> yuck, yuck. Yeah, it was so disappointing. I've... I've been scarred for life. Oh, <laughs> no. Out of interest, what did he want to do? <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to know. Yeah, no, maybe I don't, Tanisha. Over the weekend, I went to bowling. Nothing better than bowling a few spares with the fellas over a couple of slushies and hot dogs. Uh, the bowling's comp- not cool. It's cool. It's not. Cool. <laughs> it's not cool. Ask anyone; they'll tell you bowling's cool. <laughs> yeah, no how many How many other sports do you play? Where, why your, is every, where your laces are uh, fluorescent? Why is? Do you still have to put other shoes on when you play? Of course. Why is every cool. bowling alley look like it's going under? Like they all they they all look like they haven't been renovated you since the eighties. To wear the shoes because it is the appropriate footwear for the sport. Are you at the point yet where you're bringing your own bowling shoes? I I look at that glass window every time I go past and go, is it time to buy my own ball? Anyway, the competition with these guys, it's fast, it's furious, a lot of testosterone mm. flying around, pretty competitive guys. Uh, and I'm not ashamed to admit it, but I, I'm probably the weakest bowler in the group. Mm-hmm. Um, but let me take you to the weekend. The fellas were 2-0. and oh. I hadn't won a game all afternoon. Five bowls in. My back was against the wall. After racking up five spares, Scott, my friend, got a strike. I knew I needed something special to win. I had to dig deep. I stepped up to the plate then, took a deep breath, and I unleashed hell! Furious strike. The boys were impressed. (laughs) Even more so when I got on my next strike. You know what they call three strikes in a row in bowling, Ben? Yeah, what? Do you not know? A hat trick? No, it's called a turkey. And I got one. I think in your head this is way more epic than I got it. No, I got it. you got to play the set. <laughs> At this point, the whole bowling alley were on their feet, clapping, chanting. Liam, 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 yeah. Liam, Liam. Liam, with ice running through my veins, I bowl just how my daddy taught me, and I roll a venomous fourth strike in a row. <laughs> it was it annoying just me or anyone else when there was just that, was that one, one pin, pin that kept yeah, that falling was, that like was, two seconds after the strike? Shooting me, tears. <laughs> <laughs> that was so unnecessary. Four. four. 
<laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. You put I, up three I just fingers. put up three fingers in the, yeah. Yeah, in the studio. So Four was, strikes. Four strikes. Is pretty good. A gentleman's turkey. Rarely seen in the bowling alley. You know what, though? Four strikes, in my opinion, not as good as a hole in one, which I've gotten before. I don't know, man. It's like it's kind of like getting four hole in ones in a row. No, it's not. What's your sporting achievement? 13, 24, 10. Give us a buzz. Uh, Craig joins us now. Craig, what is your greatest sporting achievement? Well, mate, I, I had to call in because, you know, Liam thinks four strikes in a row is the best anybody could do. But I'm just going to have to lay down the challenge, boys. It was seven. Seven in a row. No, you didn't. You got you, seven yeah. strikes. You didn't get seven in a row. Yeah, it, I mean, it, it gets harder and harder because the tension builds. And, you know, people start to look. They want you to fail. They yeah. want you to miss everything, you know. What um, bowling alley was it, Craig? Well, look, the kids were gathered around in, in the lounge room close to the Wii at the time. Oh, here we okay. go. It's Wii I bowling. knew it was too damn good to be true. As someone well, who has received a gentleman's turkey, I know that's <laughs> I know that's too much pressure for any mere mortal. It's a lot of pressure, but, you know, you, your wrist isn't as, as well-developed as you might yeah, think, you know. Yeah, like the yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And you don't have the shoes. You don't have the lane run yep, up. Yeah, I, yep. I'd, I'd, I'd go so far as to say it's actually hard. Oh, that, that is, that's actually a disgrace to the great sport of bowling, Craig. Well done, Craig. Thank you very much. Ben, you were getting stuck right into me yesterday uh, after finding out my dirty little secret. Well, I've known you now for nine years, Liam, and I had no idea... That your mum mm. is wrapping all of your presents for you. Yeah. Um, well, mainly just my presents for Sarah, my my fiance. You know how people when they wrap presents, it's like really tight, and there's mm. like you know there's only like a little bit of tape used, and there's strings. Like there's like double strings, and it's like fluffed. You know they do that thing with the scissors, and it's like yeah, like sort yeah, of. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I can't do any of that. You could do that. It's easy. I it looks terrible. It looks like paper mache or something. When I then when again, I'm also it. like I'm not a good rapper, but I still just do it. You know what I mean? Yeah, the counts. I was. I, I, I don't I, I know. I always try because what happens? It's always awkward as well because I think Sarah probably knows that I'm not like I'm doing capable it. Yeah, of rapping that yeah. well. So she kind of knows as well. The amount of time you would waste driving all the way to your mum and dad's house to wrap a present. It's just done better though. Yeah, no one does it like mum. I think that you're a little bit too old to have your mum wrap your presents for you. It's not like I'm, you know, getting out of doing my washing or something. Like, Well, that's pretty common, though. What, people get their mum to do their washing? Yeah, my mum does my brother's washing. How old's your brother? Ah, uh, 32? 30 or 30? He's at least 32. <laughs> your, I mean, mum, your mum does your brother's washing still? Pretty sure. He yeah. lives by himself? Yeah. He doesn't stop well, That's worse than rapping. I'm like, <laughs> I only come around yeah, like Christmas, yeah. Valentine's Day and a birthday every year. That's three <laughs> times I need her service. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm with you. That's wild. <laughs> yeah. That is wild. 13, 24, 10. What does your mum still do for you? We know there's a lot of mummies boys out there mm-hmm. and mummies girls. Goes both ways. 13, 24, 10 is our number. Uh, Victoria, what's your mum still doing for you? My mum still packs my lunch. Every day. Yeah, and then I had like a six-week crack and she got me like a little lunchbox and she packed me juice boxes, muesli bars, and she went out to Coles and bought me like these cheese crackers. <laughs> do you do you live with your mum still? Yeah, yeah, I still live with her. So okay. How, how old are you? Uh, 25. I'll That's way too old to be getting your mum to pack your lunch. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's fine to be living with mum, but packing, packing your lunch, like... Do you, do, she just do you does feel, it so well. Oh, why? Yeah, I'm sure she does. I mean, I, I must admit, if I was still living at home, I, I wouldn't say no to a pack yeah. lunch if it was there. <laughs> like, if anything, I'm a little jealous, but that is kind of funny. You're heading into work with your little LCM bars. Uh, Laura joins us. This is your sister. What's your mum still doing for her? Hey, Ben and Liam. Uh, my sister still goes to my mum's house to get her ears clean. What do you mean? That Why? Is wild. So Why? when we were growing growing up, we were a family of five, and every Sunday, my mum would make sure that we were, we were bathed and ears cleaned and everything nice and fresh for the week. And my sister still goes and gets it done. I mean, at least she's not getting bathed still by mum. So she'll go around there like a fully grown woman will sit down, and what will she sit on the floor? And mum will sit like on a chair above her and like clean her ears out. How does it work? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Always they do it in the lounge now, and she just sort of lays down, and mum will uh, do her ears and 
Yeah. <laughs> I mean, how dirty are your ears? Yeah, yeah, I was say. It's not, a, a, not a once a week job, I wouldn't have thought. How but. often is she getting her ears cleaned? Once a week. She does it like on the Sunday <sighs> afternoon. We go up there for dinner and she still gets hers done and... Yeah. That's ridiculous. <laughs> I like the idea of you finishing dinner and then your, your mum goes, it's time, pats her lap, and then your, your sister just jumps up. <laughs> then I was having a lovely dinner last night with my fiance Sarah at home, a nice little roast chicken, beautiful. And uh, I was sitting there and she goes, so, what do you think of the new table setting and Kmart plates? And I said, oh, yeah, they look awesome. <laughs> they are. Yeah. And she went, what, you, you didn't notice? And I said, yeah. Yeah, it yeah great. I noticed. Yeah. She's like, are you being sarcastic? And I, I was like, yeah. But I, <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea. We were, like, we're all, literally all eating off plates. of them. Yeah, all in front of us. Like, she's got some, yeah, some pretty nice bowls there, um, you know, like for salads and that sort of stuff. Yeah, but it's just, it's just stuff you don't care about. I don't like, care. I don't care uh, plates, if so. anything, I noticed one salad bowl, which I quite liked, this glass one, did have mm. a little bit of a chip on it, but yeah. I noticed it in the bin when I was taking out the rubbish the other day. And I thought, what the hell is that doing in there? But I didn't really put much more thought into it. I yep. certainly didn't ask any questions. <laughs> uh, but I suppose it's just because we've got a new salad bowl, little you know, new yeah. set up in there. But yep. I'm I'm pretty bad for that. I mm. must admit. Like I, I'd probably notice cutlery because I kind of like I have a bit yep. of a fascination with the the, the weight of cutlery yep. and you you know. But I mean the rest oh. of the stuff, no idea. You're definitely not alone though. I get drilled for that all the time. Actually, I'm pretty sure last night at dinner as well, I was talking to my fiance Sam. And I was kind of because she works like different shifts every day. Yeah. And I was trying to get like what's coming up this week for her, and she's working on Sunday. So I said, "Oh, so you'll be home by four? And she's like, "I've been working this same job now for six years, and I have never ever on a Sunday finished at four. I always finish at five fifteen. I went, "Do you? <laughs> <laughs> is that right? I wouldn't is that, know. Is that so? I played PlayStation for ten hours in a row that day. I barely go to the toilet, so I don't. I don't. I've lost t- <laughs> touch with all time, temperature, reality. Um, why don't we talk oblivious partners? What didn't they notice? Thirteen, twenty, four, ten. Maybe you got your hair done like a full colour change that mm. you didn't even notice or, I don't know, you bought a new TV. If you get on air as well, you go on the draw for Nova's first class and 50K. So first class flights to anywhere in the world and $50,000 just for getting on air, you go on the draw. 13, 24, 10. Oblivious Partners, what didn't they notice? Bonnie joins us now. In Oblivious Partners, what didn't they notice? Hey, Ben and Liam. My husband didn't notice I repainted the whole dining room while he was taking a nap. <laughs> That's impressive. Right, so was it like, to be fair though, was it like a different, a different shade, shade of white? Like, yeah. No, it went from an awful yellowy, orangey colour to a beautiful linen colour. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. No, nah, they, they sound like similar colours to me. Like, oh, <laughs> unless it's like a full, you know, it's gone like a, it's a, it's a beige yeah. one now. When we whatever. repainted the inside of our house, I remember we had like four different sample pots, all different shades of white, and I couldn't tell the difference yeah, between each one. I mean, sh- you'd think the smell of the paint might have given yeah. it away a little bit, or the tarp on the floor. I'm impressed, Bonnie, that you managed to paint an entire lounge room while he was having yeah, a nap. Yeah, yeah, I know. It must have been a long nap. Bridget, do you have an uh, oblivious partner as well? Yes, um, my husband didn't uh, connect that I was three months pregnant and so I did a bun in the oven reveal and he just didn't get it, thought I'd just cooked more food. Hang on, so you were pregnant for three months and your partner didn't even know? He just didn't cotton on. I'd left a whole bunch of hints and did a reveal and oh, he just still didn't Oh, so yeah. you were trying to like be a bit cute about it and like yeah. let him find out in a fun way and then he just wasn't clicking. You, you were going to birthday parties, he's like, yeah, I'm just having a drink, what's wrong with you? Let's go, you used to love them. No, I can't have a drink, wink, wink. Wink, wink. because we're expecting company. Oh, who's coming over? <laughs> Sweet. You invite the boys over, did you? Here on Nova, we have got a whole heap of Ed Sheeran tickets to give away to you. We've done all sorts of different competitions to win these Ed Sheeran tickets across the last kind of seven days. But today, because it's getting close to Easter, we're thinking of doing Egg Sheeran, Liam. Egg Sheeran. Uh, When I pack Easter eggs into my mouth, I sing Ed Sheeran songs. If you can pick the song, you get a double pass. You better believe this was Liam's idea. I think he just wants to eat Easter eggs. How many you got there, Liam? Can't count that quick. I mean, okay. it's, I think it's 125 grams. I, I, I'll count as. Should I just like absolutely load up? I mean, well, I like, think you want to get a fair few into your mouth. Like Twenty. Here. Um, before you shove them in, though, let's have a chat to Beck. Hi, how you going? Pretty good, thank you. So Liam's going to put the eggs into his mouth. He's going to sing an Ed Sheeran song. It'll be hard to hear because it'll be all mumbly. If you can guess the <laughs> song, you're heading along to see Ed Sheeran. Oh, fingers crossed. All right, I'm going to chuck right. him in, Beck. One, two, four, four. Oh, okay. Five, six. Uh, that's <laughs> 
Oh. I can seven. Oh, Maybe spit one out. Yeah. Six. Yeah. We'll get harder. We'll put more eggs in as we go. All right. Sounds good. Go for it, Liam. Oh, how Castle on the hill? <laughs> well done. Oh my god, thank you. No worries, Beck. Congratulations. You are heading along to see Ed Sheeran. Liam has still got the eggs in his mouth, so we'll roll right in to the next one. Playing now is Aiden. How are you guys doing? Very good. Uh, Liam, maybe chuck one more in there, or you think you're good? I reckon we are I can't understand you. I think he says putting two more in. That why? Right. Okay. Right. Sounds good. Oh, yeah. Just lead the. Okay. Oh, yep. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Next song, Liam. <laughs> Very good. Very well done, Aiden. You're heading along you. to see Ed Sheeran. Awesome. Uh, I think this is a good game because I think, like, you can kind of hear what you're saying, but it is still a little bit tricky. Well done. Rebecca is playing next. All right, <laughs> Liam has still got, got his no mouth. No, you'll be fine. I think it's been pretty easy so far. All right, Liam, song number three, the final song. <laughs> Two more in. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right, it's made it a little bit harder. <laughs> Whenever you're ready, Liam. <laughs> <laughs> if you just join us, it's not a sheep dying. That is Liam oh, singing. It sounds like a goat in pain. It does, doesn't it, Beck? What's the song, though? Do you know? Graffiti over pass. No. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, Kelly, Liam, back to the start, please. Give us a bit more. <laughs> No idea? Uh, you have a guess? Uh, what did you say, like, A-team or something? No, it's not A-team, sorry. Victoria, what song is Liam trying to sing in Egg Sheeran? Oh, I have no idea. Can he take one out? Yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> don't put one more in, please. No, no, please don't. No. No. Oh, Liam, just sing it again. Sing it again. Well done. You're heading along to see Egg Shear and congratulations, Victoria. Thank you. No worries. It's a Yeah, big topic this week. Ash Barty retired too early. I'm saying, yeah. I think she did. I was talking about it a fair bit yesterday. I thought it was great that she retired when she did. I think it's nothing more badass. Look, I think this is a debate that maybe a lot of people are are having. At the moment, yeah. In their friendship circles, going, oh, 25, is that too early? Liam and I are both going to have 30 seconds to prove our point. It's up to the jury to decide who wins the big debate. Uh, Do you want me to go first? Yeah. All right, so I'm saying that she did retire at the perfect time. There's nothing cooler than someone retiring at the top of their game. All the greats did it. Michael Jordan, Cameron Diaz, Hamish and Andy, and now Ash Barty. What's the alternative? Pulling a meatloaf and hanging around way past your prime? Gross. R.I.P. Meatloaf. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you a question. When you climb to the top of a mountain, what do you do? Do you stay up there and freeze to death? No. You climb back down, you go home, you sit on the white sands of a Queensland beach, and you crack a cold 4X gold. And that's exactly what Ash Barty has done, because the Oz Open was her mountain. Yeah. That, there's this little point of that that just kind of annoyed me, like top of the game. I reckon she's, she's there, but she's not at the top. She's not at the peak. What do you mean she's not at the peak? Well, she hasn't won every Grand Slam. But she doesn't want to do that. It's not. You keep saying that. Yeah, That's... I know, but I'm saying it's what, where, where real greatness lies. Like it's the difference between like good and great. I reckon. Do you think she's just good? 
No, I think she's excellent, but I think... So could, that's uh, just... Look, okay, look, I think... your other point. I think she could be legendary, potentially. 30 seconds on the clock. Let's go. She's hung up the racket way too soon. She's robbed us of our golden years. This is her prime. We want more Grand Slams. This is like Warney pulling up stumps before the 700. It's like Kathy Freeman quitting 200 metres into the race. It's like Steve Irwin saying he doesn't like khaki anymore and giving up on wildlife conversa- conservation. I said conversation. Wrong word. <laughs> because he's made enough money from the Crocodile Hunter movie starring Magda Shabansky. Retiring at 25. Are you for real? Why? Because you don't like tennis? Welcome to the real world, Ash. You think people like their jobs? You reckon Ben likes working here with me? No. But he does it anyway. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, you came along <laughs> with me, didn't you? Oh, that's you know very what? telling. Even though we both weren't feeling great about this one, I am I reckon we both delivered pretty strong debates. Well, I mean, I suppose it's not up to us. It's up to Helen, uh, who's a member of the jury. I mean, what do you think? Ash Barty, has she retired too soon? Ben is saying, no way, perfect time. I'm saying, yeah, she's called it too soon. You know what? It's her choice. And I think she's going to end up having more um, comebacks and more retirements and more farewells than John Farnham. You I'm reckon? All right. You reckon All she'll right. be back for a well, little more taste? That's a point to me, Helen. Thank you very much. Angela, who won the big debate, me or Liam? Definitely Liam. Mm. I think she retired way too early. She's amazing. She's got so much more to give. Definitely way too early. Uh, well, I suppose it all comes down to Antonio. Ben and Liam, happy Friday. Thank hey, you very much. Happy Friday Antonio. to you. All right, boys, look, I'll start with you, Ben. Mm-hmm. Very good points. Michael Jordan, Hamish and Andy, probably mm-hmm. the best radio <laughs> duo of all time. <laughs> I, th- I think you put together a very good debate. Liam? Yeah. You also brought in the big names. You talked about Warney, Indeed. Kathy Freeman, and mm. Steve Irwin. Mm. You had one fin- fundamental issue with all of these po- people mm. is that they all ended their careers at the top of their game, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I they wouldn't did. say that. They did. One they of them did. unfortunately died, so yeah. let's not get yes, into that. at the top of his game. But I don't, what, Warney, I'm argue, what I'm arguing Warney's is that Ash game. isn't at the top of her game. She's 25, mate. She could do another 10 years and win for those 10 years easily. That is not she's the top. She's got $30 million in the bank. She's fine. She's top of her game. She's made the right decision. Ben is the winner. Oh, that oh, yeah. was a debate. A big, big debate. We now have the winner. I'm off you, Antonio. I'm oh, off you. I'm on you, Antonio. Thank you very much, sir. Liam, do you believe in miracles? I do, Yes. Well, there was a miracle, uh, I believe, yesterday. There's a Facebook page called Lost Pets, and someone had posted that they found a goldfish in their swimming pool, and they were asking if anyone knew who it belonged to. Turns out it belongs to their neighbour, whose name is Mickey, and he joins us now. Uh, so many questions, but our first question is, how did that goldfish that belonged to you end up in your neighbour's swimming pool? Oh, I still can't explain it. Yeah. Was the goldfish in a fish tank or was it in a <coughs> pond? I've got an old bathtub that I made it into a pond. It is fascinating, though, that a fish can go from the bathtub in your backyard into the mm. neighbour's pool and no one knows how. Reading some of the comments, I think the main theory, Mickey, is that perhaps a, a bird of prey picked up the fish and then carried it, and then dropped it, and it happened to land is, in the neighbour's pool. Is that a possibility, Mickey? Um, I've been trying to work that out, but my pond is in an enclosed entertaining area, so it would have to come in and go back out. And yeah, it does seem pretty it, it unlikely. Does in, yeah. You know what this is? What is it, Liam? This is a household mystery. Mm-hmm. I mean, you heard from Mickey there. He's bamboozled. He's got no idea. How did this fish end up pond to pool? Fair distance for fish. The last time I checked, fish have fins, not wings. Household mysteries. What's yours? What can't you explain? 132410. Renee joins us now. Hi, Ben and Liam. How are you? Very Very good. good. We're talking household mysteries. You've got one as well? Yes. So I believe there is a ghost in our house. Oh. Because... One um, evening, my son woke up crying and the light was on and the door was open and there's no way to explain it. And was anybody else home? No one was home. And there's no way that I would leave the door open and the light on when he's asleep. Yeah, that is scary. 
Oh, wow. And it, it, all, all, the, all the, like, the doors, windows locked? Because I think scarier than a ghost would be like a creeper. Yeah. <laughs> well, the hallway door was closed. Everything was closed. There's no way that anyone could get in. You know what? It's a huge mystery. It's a household mystery. One last call we hear from John. What is it, mate? Uh, so we've got a tiny little mouse uh, that we've been trying to catch. And it runs, uh, when it runs away, it runs at the wall and just disappears. And there's no hole in the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on. Ghost mouse. Ghost mouse. So... It's just like Harry Potter. You know when he does... Yeah, the, yeah, the, the yeah. The yeah, nine, and three nine and three quarters. He runs at the wall and then just disappears. And we have no idea where he goes. How there's many no times have you seen the mouse run into the wall and disappear? Oh, three or four times. Is there... Every time we try and catch it, it just runs. It's tiny. It's like the smallest mouse you've ever seen. Yeah. And what? Yeah. And it... he just disappears. And there's no hole there. There's no... You've checked it for holes. No, there's definitely no hole in the wall. <laughs> John, is there is there cupboards nearby? Could it be scattering across and sort of hiding underneath something? Or? No, because it's, it's in the lounge. So in the lounge area of the house. Jeez. So we've got an 80s house which has those old brick walls. Yeah. Uh, they're not rendered, and he just runs at the wall, and he just is gone. So we ca- we cannot right. figure out how he's getting the house. Yeah. <laughs> What's going on there? That is a mystery, John. Bath green screens and stuff. I've yeah. Got nothing, it hasn't so. got a little tiny green screen, has it? No, I don't think so. I can't see one. Yeah, no, I think that that's a ghost mouse. That's a ghost. <laughs> what you got there, John, is a yeah. ghost mouse. You better call the Ghostbusters. All the exterminators should both work. Um, either way, thank you so much uh, for your call. Bring in the rats. Love rat, there's a love rat. Love rat, there's a love rat. Hello, producer Bell, aka the love rat. People can email you anytime if they'd like. If they've got like sort of a quarrel. Uh, a qualm with a loved a one. Yes. Uh, loverat at nofrenfm.com.au is the email. This one's from Ryan. He said, hey, loverat, I feel like I'm being falsely accused of cheating. Well, here we go. <laughs> I was at a pool party over the weekend, and one of my girlfriend's mates got changed in front of me. She's been furious all week, but, like, what was I supposed to do, you know? <laughs> I couldn't help it. <laughs> I feel like she's overreacting. Ah. Ah. We well, didn't have to look. First of all, well, hang hey. on, but there was no like interaction though, was there? Like, by the sounds, sounds of it, though, by the sounds of it, he was watching her get changed, and she was getting changed like openly in front of everybody. But yeah. he was like probably like giving she it a lot of eye contact. Probably, probably go, a face for yeah. the eyes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If it's in front of more than just him, that's not cheating. Yeah, but was, I mean, like, was she hey, getting gonna... changed? Do you think she was like? Just taking her shirt off and just there's a bikini underneath. Is that was that what it was? Because no, yeah, what about what changed in front of everybody? And again, it, wouldn't, wouldn't like that, that be her responsibility to go? To, like, I wouldn't get changed in front of a whole group of people. Yeah, yeah. Again, like, like, wouldn't, you just, wouldn't you just go around the corner and just quickly? Which like, comes okay. back to the amount of eye contact that he was yeah, giving the situation. We don't really know, and I, I, I got a fairly good feeling Ryan could have been <laughs> giving it a fairly good eyeball. Yeah, that's the thing. If it's not a one-on-one thing and she's doing it because she doesn't care and yep. she's confident, whatever, I don't think that's cheating at all. But I he's do but, yeah, feel he's, for his he's, partner. He's, maybe who, should, out of courtesy, he probably should have looked away. Or, yes. at the very least, like looked at a sort of window and see if he could get a pretty sweet reflection. <laughs> oh, yeah. Liam. Yeah. 13, 24, 10. Why did they accuse you of cheating? Yeah. Maybe someone got changed in front of you. Um, I don't know. Maybe you went skinny dipping or something like that. I mean, there's there's different sort of ways you can look at things. Yeah, 13, 24, 10 is the number. If you get on air... $50,000 and first class flights to anywhere in the world could be yours. Just give us a buzz. Why did they accuse you of cheating? Dave joins us. Uh, why did they accuse you of cheating? Uh, I'm a member of a dive club and I used to go away often for a weekend dot scuba diving. Yeah. Um, and uh, have a shave before I went away so the, you know, the mask could seal better against your face. Yeah. And because I was going away for the weekend and I had a shave before I went, I was accused of cheating. <laughs> yeah, right, I see. So I looked, Who are you shaving yeah, for? Yeah, well, you don't do this for me. <laughs> You're all rugged during the week. Yeah. No, I see that. I see that, Dave. I That's don't know. A good I don't one. know. Were you scuba diving with the lads? I don't know. Chris joins us now. Why did you get accused of cheating? Um, I got a band aid on my finger from work. Yeah. Right. And yeah. Well, yeah. I was, yeah. I cut myself at work, and she thought that someone fixed me up. She said, "Well, you know, where'd you get that from?" I said, "Well, <laughs> from the first aid room at work." And yeah, because I used to finish work uh, work quite late. Yeah. She dreamed that I was getting fixed up by somebody else. 
That's such a uh, such a long bow to draw, oh, isn't it? Like you see, what you see, what like a lot of movies where like soldiers get patched up by you know like nurses and they, so they fall she, in it, love. Did she think it was like somebody at work, like a colleague, patched you up, or did she think like, you went to the doctor no. and got patched up? Yeah, she just thought that I was like going somewhere else with somebody after work because I used to finish work at like eleven thirty, but yeah. I just didn't start in the morning, so she thought I'd disappear after work and. Go see somebody else, but get a it was, yeah, right. Yeah, get a band aid. Yeah, Come right. and get fixed up. You still together, Chris? Or no, no, no. This was years ago. Yeah, was yeah, okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. You probably get rid of that one. Yeah, <laughs> sound like a keeper, Chris. <laughs> and that's the end of the Ben Liam podcast. Uh, ben, earlier in the uh, episode, you you were going to tell me what you what you did with the form guide that yeah. I gave you on just sort of the. The, the talking points yep. and how we get in and out of the, the podcast. Yep. So I was super excited when I got that email because I, I went to my printer. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I Is printed, it an Epsom? Yep, it is actually. Epsom Workforce 590. Wow, that's a hell of a model. Yeah. It always seems to struggle with Bluetooth, but what what printer ever works perfectly? It's fair. Um, so anyway, I got the form guide in my emails. I went to the Epsom. Uh, I printed off the form guide. A lot of pages. It was like mm. 400 pages. 406. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, and then I, so what I did was I took all those papers and then I went to the bathroom and I threw out all that toilet paper and I just left them next to the toilet. So now every day I use the form guide as toilet paper. Wow. That, uh, and it's explains like, it's not, why you've been walking so funny. Yeah. And it's not, it's not, got, it's not comfy. No. It's not I mean, pleasant. You've obviously got a lot of, um, paper cuts in yeah. your, your anus. Yeah. Like I don't do it cause it feels good. You do it just in spite of me. I do it to make a point. Yeah, and that really upsets me. Um, and I'm only, I'm only, I'm only six days in. I still got four hundred days to go. <laughs> well into next year. <laughs> well, um, I don't know. Maybe I could work on. I don't know. Maybe um, shortening the the form guide. Do you think that would help if I got it down to like a, a two hundred? The only way it'd help is if you page. printed it on Kleenex. That's the only way it'll help. So you're still going to be wiping your yeah. bum with it forever. Okay. Well, maybe we'll just maybe I should throw out the rule book. Now you're talking. No, nah, I'm not going to do that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just upset, you know. Yeah. Just upset. <laughs> yeah, just upset. Yeah. Like, I put a lot of yeah. effort into it. Yeah. yeah that's I think mean. you're just trying to find a way to end this. No, 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 no. So keep going then. I always know how to end these things. Yeah. That's the end. So do it. That is the end. This is the end? Mm-hmm. This is the end. My own You know what friend. I'm going to do? What? I'm going to go to your house. Yeah. And in the dark of the night, I'm going to open your Epsom workforce. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you might think I'm about to say I'm going to do that thing where I scan my bum. No, no. I thought you were going to say no. something else. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to sit in it. Yeah, I'm going to shit in your, yeah. <laughs> in your printer. Yeah, and then I'm going to close it, and then I'm not going to tell anyone. Wow, I'm going to take my Epsom workforce 590 <laughs> the next night in the dead of the night. Yes, and I'm going to let myself into your house. Yeah, and I'm going to put it in your oven and turn it up to 180. Okay. And roast it for four hours. <laughs> and um, the, the, the smell of melted plastic and turd <laughs> will, will, will be filled be, throughout the house. It's going to be strong. Uh, but then I suppose, who's the real winner here? Because you've melted your, your excellent printer. Yeah. And I know it had a few Bluetooth issues, but yeah. then you're left un, unprintable. But I would say your oven's unusable. It's true. It's true. Um, and you've still wiped your bum on my... <laughs> My little form guide. So yep. I suppose, yeah, you win. You win that one. Yep. But I'll get you. You get me. I'll bloody get you. What would you have wiped with though if you would, if you were to do a turd in my printer? The form guide. No wipes. No wipes. <laughs> I'll walk around with with the rest of it like a badge of honour, <laughs> <laughs> remembering the time I got you good. Uh, you know what I'm going to do? What are you going to do? I'm going to eat a whole bunch of frozen corn. <laughs> 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 I go to my really, house. Just my worst fear. Just my worst fear is <laughs> this being played in a boardroom with all the Nova <laughs> like bosses. Do you know what I mean? Going, are we allowing this? Like, are we really paying? Is this what we're paying for? Like, just playing it and everyone's just sitting there. Imagine if Lachlan Murdoch heard this. <laughs> were you talking about the frozen corn? Like, imagine where you where like, imagine if he like, but, like, he just loved it. He's like, you got to do more of that Why stuff. Why are they not doing National Drive? Get them on. <laughs> All right, see ya. Ben and Liam is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcasts.com.au.